You may have heard the terms panic, panic attacks, and panic disorder, and are wondering if you fall under any of these categories. To get you even more confused, let me just say that you can have panic attacks and not panic or panic disorder, and you can suffer from panic while having no panic attacks. Now let me clear things up a bit, and then I'll run you through a panic screening test that you can tally up and get a bit more of an idea as to whether you have issues with panic. First off, three quick definitions for you. Panic is the unhelpful thinking style that is causing the anxiety. Panic disorder is the diagnosis given when this thinking style and the avoidance that comes with it starts disrupting your life. And panic attacks are sudden bursts of high anxiety accompanied by one or more of the following symptoms. Palpitations, pounding heart or increased heart rate, sweating, trembling or shaking, dry mouth, difficulty breathing, feeling of choking, chest pain or discomfort, nausea or abdominal distress, churning in the stomach, feeling dizzy, unsteady, faint or lightheaded, feelings that objects are unreal like in a dream, fear of losing control, going crazy or passing out, fear of dying, hot flushes or cold chills, numbness or tingling sensations. Panic attacks develop suddenly and increase in intensity within about 10 minutes. You can have panic attacks from other kinds of anxiety and it not be panic disorder. It comes down to your primary fear. The primary fear with panic is of anxiety, that you will lose control of yourself, lose relationships, or your very life due to anxiety. With social anxiety, it's a fear of loss of reputation or ostracism from your community, ending up rejected and alone. With phobias, it's the fear of harm from whatever it is that the specific fear is focused on. With OCD, it's the fear that discomfort or a feeling of unrightness is signaling danger and the idea that you won't be able to cope with the intense regret and guilt you will feel later for not acting on this and preventing it. Generalized anxiety involves fearing many different things based on an unhelpful pattern of negative prediction called worrying. Any of these types of anxiety can lead to having panic attacks if the level of anxiety gets high enough. It's only considered panic disorder if the unhelpful thinking style fits in the panic camp. Fear of anxiety, causing yourself to embarrass yourself, lose control, or die. See, because it's fear about anxiety, you get caught in cycles of worrying about getting anxious again, which cause more and more anxiety. This can escalate into the life-disrupting condition known as panic disorder. And if it disrupts two or more areas of your life, it's then considered agoraphobia. When it gets this bad, there are generally panic attacks popping up. However, I've seen plenty of people who are caught in a panic cycle of fearing anxiety without it escalating up to the traditional symptoms known as a panic attack. So keep that in mind when you're wondering if this is the label for you. It's all about the primary fear. Figure that out and you'll have a much better idea of what you're dealing with. Now, as promised, a quick test that you can fill out to gain a better understanding of whether you may have panic disorder. First, a quick disclaimer. This is intended to act as a guide. Any diagnoses need to be done by a professional after a full assessment. Okay, you'll need to note down your scores to add them up at the end. There's just 13 questions, but you'll still need to grab a piece of paper and a pen or write it up on the device you're using. You'll need to answer every question to get an accurate score. Okay, question number one. Keeping in mind the definition of panic attacks from earlier, how frequently did you have panic attacks in the last week? No panic attacks in the past week, one panic attack in the past week, two to three panic attacks in the past week, four to six panic attacks in the past week, or more than six panic attacks in the past week. Write down zero for no panic attacks, one for one panic attack, two for two to three panic attacks, three for four to six panic attacks, and write down four for more than six. Okay, question number two. How severe were the panic attacks in the last week? Write down zero for no panic attacks, one, attacks were usually mild, two, moderate, three, severe, and four, extremely severe. Question three. How long did the panic attacks last? Zero, no panic attacks. One, one to 10 minutes. Two, 10 to 60 minutes. Three, one to two hours. Four, over two hours. Question four. 
in the past week, did you avoid certain situations because you feared having a panic attack or a feeling of discomfort? Zero, no avoidance of situations. One, infrequent avoidance of feared situations. Two, occasional avoidance. Three, frequent avoidance. Four, very frequent avoidance of feared situations. Question five. Write down any situations you avoided or had panic attacks in or experienced a feeling of discomfort when you were not accompanied. These might include airplanes, subways, buses, trains, ships, theatres, cinemas, supermarkets, standing in lines, queues, auditoriums, stadiums, parties, social gatherings, crowds, restaurants, museums, elevators or lifts, enclosed spaces like tunnels, classrooms, lecture halls, driving or riding in a car, large rooms like lobbies, walking on the street, wide streets, courtyards, high places, crossing bridges, traveling away from home, or staying home alone. Score yourself zero if there aren't any, one for one situation, two for two to three situations, three for four to eight situations, and score yourself four points if there are more than eight situations. Okay, question six. Rate how important these avoided situations were. Zero for unimportant, it didn't matter at all that you didn't go. One, not very important. Two, moderately important. Three, very important. Four, extremely important. Question seven. In the past week, did you suffer from the fear of having a panic attack? So anticipatory anxiety or fear of being afraid. Zero, no anticipatory anxiety. One, infrequent fear of having a panic attack. Two, sometimes feared having a panic attack. Three, frequently feared having a panic attack. Or four, feared having a panic attack all the time. Question eight, how strong was this fear of fear? Zero, no fear. One, mild. Two, moderate. Three, marked. Four, extreme. Question nine. In the past week, did panic attacks or agoraphobia lead to an impairment in your family relationships with your partner or children, etc.? Zero, no impairment. One, mild impairment. Two, moderate impairment. Three, marked impairment. Or four, extreme impairment. Question 10. In the past week, did panic attacks or agoraphobia lead to an impairment of your social life and leisure activities? For example, you weren't able to go to a film or party. Zero, no impairment. One, mild impairment. Two, moderate impairment. Three, marked impairment. Or four, extreme impairment. And question 11. In the past week, did panic attacks or agoraphobia lead to an impairment of your work or household responsibilities? Zero, no impairment. One, mild impairment, two, moderate impairment, three, marked impairment, or four, extreme impairment. Question 12. In the past week, did you worry about suffering harm from your panic attacks? For example, having a heart attack or fainting? Zero, not true. One, hardly true. Two, partly true. Three, mostly true. Four, definitely true. And lastly, question 13. Do you sometimes believe that your doctor was wrong when he told you that your symptoms like rapid heart rate, tingling sensations, or shortness of breath have a psychological cause? Do you believe the actual cause of these symptoms is an undiscovered physical problem? Zero, not true. You do believe it's psychological. One, hardly true. Two, partly true. Three, mostly true. Or four, definitely true. You believe it's definitely something wrong with your body. Well done. You got all your answers down. Now add up your numbers to get your total score. If your score is between zero and eight, then you're probably not looking at panic disorder or you're in remission. If your score is nine to 18, then you may have mild panic disorder. 19 to 28 is moderate, 29 to 39 is severe, and 40 plus probably means you have very severe issues with panic. Again, a reminder that this is meant as a guide to give you greater understanding of your difficulties. For a diagnosis, you'll need an assessment by a professional near you. Big thanks to psychologytools.com who provided the panic and agoraphobia scale. If you want to fill out the test online and have it score it up for you, you can go to their website. I'll put a link below. I hope this has helped you glean greater insights into your anxiety. 
If you're finding that panic is your struggle, then hop on the waitlist for our Panic to Peace online course. It's not open often so we can manage the numbers, but you can sign up to be the first one notified when it does. I'll put a link below for that too, so check that out.